My name's Kobe Ann Edgar. I am from Sydney now. <laughs> I just moved to Sydney. Um, my family's from Darwin. I'm Larakia. Um, my dad's English. My mum's Larakia Filipino. Um, I've been curating for about six years now. I enjoy curating because I get to, uh, unlike an artist who has to, who has to like really reach out to other artists, I don't really um, have to do that being a curator. I can work with lots of artists all the time. So for me, curating is just a sustaining kind of a body of people to, um, to live and work around. My last curatorial project was um, In Our Hands by Robert Fielding. It's a our mob contemporary behind the glass at the Adelaide Festival Centre. So I worked with Robert Fielding, who um, is from the Mimli Maku community. Uh, I've worked with him for three years now, going up to desert and teaching him how to hang works and um, workshopping his essay writing. And so this was kind of like a culmination of our relationship over those three years of just working for a week with each other every year. And his work's really, really shifted from, um, you know, dot painting to conceptual work. So he's thinking more about, um, you know, photography and the processes that he's using and really conceptualising the way that he's um, bringing across his messages. And uh, even with his essay writing, he's using a lot more language in it now. And um, you know, that kind of um, relationship has, it's taken a long time and he's, he's really flourishing and um, so I really wanted him to be in, in this show to, to show kind of the diversity between, you know, what he did back three or four years ago to what he's doing now and how much um, his work's progressing and he's got this energy and he's so much fun to work with because of that. So in our hands, is, it's, um, it, was, it was good fun. Um, yeah, I, I can't wait to work with him more. So. Curating for artists, I, I definitely prefer to kind of get to know an artist and where they're at within their career at that point in time so that um, I can kind of uh, draw the lines between artists across Australia um, and, and curate that way. Um, and I think that that speaks to their communities. I, a lot of the time if I'm curating something, then I won't, um, you know, I'll, I'll pick a venue that reflects that properly and um, reflects what the artists want to say so that it's picked up a lot easier. So um, there's no point in, you know, preaching to the converted, but also there's no point in, you know, putting something in a gallery that it, people are just going to walk straight past and not understand. Cur curating is so young, so I'm kind of making it up. <laughs> um, for me, it's, it's, it's more about um, you know, going off of the energy of artists because, um, you know, I can sit in, in a job and get paid for my nine till five, but um, with them, their energy comes um, in, in waves and they really need to say or speak about that particular um, thing at that time. So my responsibility is to listen to my artists. My responsibility is to listen to the community and to be a filter, um, to create a platform for them to be able to say what they need to say, but then be a filter so that the rest of society and the rest of the world can understand and comprehend that. I like to let the artist lead a lot more than, than myself. Like once the work's in the gallery, I'll, I'll let it known like how I'd like to present this work and why. But um, I, I tend to have a really close relationship with all the artists that I work with. So I'll be catching up for coffees and dinners with them and getting to know them as a person as well as their work. So um, once I know that, I think it, it, it really pushes my practice and you know how I even want to do the floor sheet will then be um, influenced by that artist and how they'd like to be presented. If there's not time to kind of, you know, um, get to build those relationships, then the work is, um, you know, it's just like saying, okay, I've got this concept and then you just pick something that they've already made and, and put it in a gallery. And I think that's uh, counterproductive to the relationships that you build. So I like to have a, a big load of time to work with the artists and also then to debrief like a couple of months afterwards, I'll you know have a chat to them and say, How, were you happy? What, how's your work changed since then? Was I okay as a curator? <laughs> that kind of thing. So time is super, super important. I think when you're curating with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander artists, the community is what um, tells you what needs to be curated at that time. So you know, what, what's precious to their heart and their community at that time. So there's a lot going on with Maralinga down in South Australia at the moment. And, you know, that's what they're kind of passionate about in politics. But then, you know, there's also a lot of urban artists that are trying to figure out who their community is and who they are and wh where their family is from. So um, I, I think the, the community of, of artists and then 
each individual artist within that will have a different language group, will have a different age and, um, you know, matching them up with their ideas when they, they cross and cross pollinate, um, I think is, is really important so that they feel like they're heard and that their work is, is progressing in a way that's satisfactory to them and being heard in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities is something that um, is central to their practice.